five years ago, Minecraft got an ending. And for five years, that ending has either been misinterpreted or completely ignored. Today, we change that. <laughs> Welcome to Game Theory, and welcome to 2016! In years past, I've tended to start years off with a blue period, covering dark, depressing, or scary theories. But this year, this year is gonna be different. It's 2016! So let's start things off with a message of love, a message of hope, a message of Minecraft. Now if there's one thing YouTube loves, it's this game. Just look at the success of Captain Sparkles or Sky Does Minecraft, or the recent explosion of channels like the Diamond Minecart, Popular MMOs, and S. Sunday. It all points to one thing, that years after its release, Minecraft is just as strong as ever. And the game continues to evolve. Over on GT Live, I was fortunate enough to play around with one of its newest features, a literal working phone built inside of the game, ordering a real-life pizza through a phone built of torches and redstone. Oh yeah, and while we were at it, we kidnapped the pizza girl. Thanks again, Dallas. Anyway, what all of this shows is that Minecraft is, quite literally, an endless game. Which is why, when the full version of the game finally did come out, it was a bit odd that it had an ending. It felt strange, but it wasn't just putting an ending on the game that got people upset, it was how the game ended. In a nearly 10 minute long text scroll of two godlike beings talking about dreams within dreams, like they're analyzing Inception. It's very cryptic, very poetic, and to most gamers, very weird. We just got done surviving in a pixelated block world with zombies and exploding moss monsters, and our reward is what? Reading? Ugh. The only thing worse would have been to reward us with math. Ugh. To most players, it was a 10 minute break to reload on snacks before hopping into creative mode to build more towering monuments to the male genitalia. To others, they interpreted it as the game telling gamers to get out of the house and get a life. And to me, well, it was an episode waiting to happen. Because the ending of Minecraft has been tragically ignored, written off as philosophical garbage. When it is, in fact, a beautiful, uplifting, and thought-provoking message to the legions of dedicated gamers who've taken the time to step into the blocky shoes of Minecraft Steve. And it's a long past time that we give these credits the credit they deserve. First, if you haven't read the ending to Minecraft or just need a refresher on it, I recommend doing that now, though it's definitely not necessary to understand the episode. Regardless, BOOM! Link in the description. And I suppose I could read it here, right now, but the thing is 10 minutes, and my videos are already pretty darn long already. Now, let me start off by saying that I can totally understand why everyone's initial interpretation to this wall of text was basically, get outside and get a life. The thing is just begging for a too long, didn't read summary. But in absence of that, everyone latches onto key words. Things like the final words of the poem, wake up, as well as phrases like, the player was alive. You, you, you are alive. Lines like this, coupled with naturalistic imagery like shuffling leaves of the summer trees and crisp night sky of winter, seems to be the author telling us to wake up from the game and experience the greater world around us. But then stop for a minute and consider this. Don't you think it'd be a bit odd for the game to be telling the player to stop playing the game? Especially for a game that, as we talked about earlier, can be played endlessly. Seems like it would be kind of a bad business strategy, right? Right? So, let's take a look at the rest of the poem to get some context. The voices we hear throughout the ending speak a lot about two different dreams. The short dream of the game Minecraft, and the long dream of life. It's actually explicitly stated right here. But what's it all mean? Well, many gamers have theorized that calling the game a dream is saying it's not worth their time. Hence the get a life interpretation. But notice here that the author calls life a dream too. It's the long dream of life. And this isn't just for literary 
effect, it's meant to be taken literally. Look at this line, quote, they see so little of reality in their long dream, end quote. This is the author explicitly telling us that there's a layer of reality beyond what you or I think of as our everyday lives. It would be like if Neo and Morpheus and everyone in Zion were still in the Matrix. Wait a minute, I have a theory about that exact thing. Huh, shameless cross promotion for the win. Anyway, the world where we go to school, go to work, sit in front of our computers to watch an episode of Game Theory over and over and over again, or just go outside to play with... Uh, stick in a hoop? I don't know. Whatever you'd play outside with. That's all part of just another dream. Why does all of this confusing metaphysical mumbo-jumbo matter? Well, if life as we know it and Minecraft are both dreams, it means that us playing the game is just as valid a use of our time as doing something in the quote-unquote real world. Both are equally important because both are dreams. Just one happens to be slightly longer than the other. In short, it's the exact opposite of how everyone was interpreting this thing. It's not saying that playing games is a waste of time and that we need to get a life. It's saying that the choice to play games and engage in these virtual worlds is the same as engaging with the real world because, by their definition, they're both virtual worlds. But then that leaves us with one huge question. If the ending of Minecraft is saying that this world is just another dream, then what is reality? What are these glimpses of reality we see in the long dream of life? What are we waking up to? Well, when you first read the poem, it's not even clear whether we can answer that question because there seems to be some critical information missing. And I don't mean these two figures are being weird and cryptic. I mean, there is literally information missing. It's perhaps the most bizarre part of this already crazy convoluted ending. The intentionally omitted words within the dialogue. Quote, Sometimes I wish to tell them this world you take for truth is merely and I wish to tell them that they are in the they see so little of reality in their long dream end quote Oh, uh, what? They also talk about the universe's original interface, which still works after a million years. Quote, It worked, with a million others to sculpt a true world in a fold of the and created a for in the It's like the lamest game of Mad Libs ever. Quote, To sculpt a true world in the fold of the penis and created a penis for penis in the penis. Great. We're told that the reason these pieces are scrambled is that they're beyond our comprehension. We haven't achieved the highest level in the long game of life yet. Ugh, I knew I should have leveled up my metaphysics skill tree. But save those experience points to level up basket weaving or something, cause let me tell you, the words that fill in those blanks don't actually matter. Well, they do, but for purposes of the theory, they don't. You see, the scrambled pieces are meant to be the answers to all those questions about life people have been asking themselves since the dawn of forever. What are we? Who made us? What's our reason? for living, and there are tons of different religions and belief systems that have tried to explain it. As humans, we have so many origin stories, and the Minecraft poem leaves those pieces scrambled because ultimately it doesn't care which one of those you believe in. In an awesome way, it's just like the game. Minecraft doesn't limit you to any playstyle. That's why some people create scale models of the Parthenon, and others just create giant mountains of boobs. When it comes to the ending of the game, it's the same thing. Whatever you believe in works, whether it's God, Allah, the flying spaghetti monster, or the saving power of the brofist, you're supposed to fill in the blanks for yourself. So, is that it? A choose-your-own-adventure religious experience at the end of the game? Are these just two godlike figures casually conversing about the universe? Not at all. They try to tell us what they are, but like everything else in the ending, it's really complicated because they basically seem to be everything. Quote, the spirit of the mountain, ancestral spirits, animal spirits, jinn, ghosts, the green man, gods, demons, angels, poltergeists, alien, extraterrestrials, leptons, quarks. The words change, we do not change. We are everything you think isn't you, end quote. So what are they? In writing this episode, I looked for what the things on the list had in common. At first,
first it seemed like they were all just magical beings. Ghosts, angels, and spirits. Or maybe stuff that people imagine but aren't really real. But then they mention quarks and leptons. Real scientific things that aren't mythology. And when you factor those guys in, the explanation doesn't hold. No, what they do all have in common is that they're all things people believe are driving forces in the universe. Gods, demons, subatomic particles. Forces that change things. Whether the explanation is through science or religion, they're the forces that pull the strings. The things we believe craft the universe into what it is. But then the poem takes it one step further. It says that these two speakers are the things we think aren't us. We believe stuff like angels and ghosts are separate from us, that they're influencing us from the outside, but the poem says that we're wrong. Quote, Let's go further back. The seven billion, billion, billion atoms of the player's body were created long before this game in the heart of a star. So the player too is information from a star, end quote. What the poem is getting at is that everything in the universe is made up of the same stuff. This is Minecraft, remember? We're all made up of the same basic blocks, the same set of elements. The resources for crafting don't change. The hydrogen in our bodies is no different from the hydrogen in stars, or the water in our bodies is no different from the water on another planet. And because we're all made up of the same stuff, the poem also says that we can literally do anything. This ain't no Shia LaBeouf speech. This is way bigger than that. In fact, it's Minecraft big. In Minecraft, you can literally create anything from a cell phone to your own planet. Everything you create is just extending your imagination and the same set of basic tools to create something new, something real. At the end of the poem, it tells you that every Everything you need is already within you. Since the universe is made up of the same basic stuff, you already have everything you need. You don't need angels or gods or quarks or anyone else to help you. You're already connected to everything in the universe, and it's already a part of who you are. And with that revelation, we finally reach our answer. That's the reality we only see a little bit of. That's the real wake-up call here. The poem has nothing to do with waking up from Minecraft. It has to do with waking up to how important and powerful you are in crafting the world, be it in the short dream of the game or the long dream of life. In the end, the real truth is this. Everything you need is within you. You are never alone. You are stronger than you know. Notch, the creator of Minecraft, has said that he agrees with the message of this poem. He's made it very clear that he's an atheist, but what we've just shown is that nothing in the poem makes it so you have to ascribe to one belief or another, as long as you recognize, quite frankly, just how awesome you are. Like the poem says, Minecraft won't tell you how to live your life, but it will remind you that you have the power to create whatever you want, to dream whatever kind of dream you want for your life. And then then you have the power to make it a reality in the world. Minecraft is all about empowering the player, giving them the tools they need to make anything they want. And this controversial ending stays true to that theme, reminding the player that whether it's in the game or without, all the power is theirs. And no matter where you're coming from last year, it's a pretty awesome thought for the beginning of 2016. But hey, that's just a theory. A GAME THEORY! THANKS FOR WATCHING! I am literally sitting under a desk in Australia right now, in a tent made of blankets and pillows. It's very uncomfortable. Stephanie is pretending not to hear me. That's just a theory! A <coughs> Ugh, that's just a cough. Oh, I gotta get out. It is so hot. I am dying. I think I'm, like, passing out. CO2 build up under here. <sighs> Oh, oh, oh man, it is good to be back home and in the closet recording this ending. Recording while abroad sucks. And hey, happy 2016 one more time, guys. There are a lot of big episodes and surprises in the works that I can't wait to share with you over the coming weeks and months. So get hype. It is going to be an incredible year. I think you're going to be really excited. By the way, if you haven't seen our Minecraft Pizza Girl kidnapping video that I mentioned earlier in this episode, click here to check it out on the GT Live 
Live channel. It is amazing some of the new technology that people are coming up with in virtual worlds these days. We had a blast, and it was also a great chance to spotlight a lot of you theorists by playing alongside you and crafting together. Although you did troll me a lot. There was there was a lot of trolling happening in that stream. <laughs> anyway, if you want some more theories, check out one of my all-time favorite game theories ever, where I calculate how much money a suit of diamond armor would actually be worth. Hint! It's a lot. Also, fun fact, it was Ronnie's first ever episode that he edited, which is why it looks so much better than anything that came before. Ugh, I love that one. So if you haven't seen it, click here to check it out. Now, if you'll excuse me, Valentine's Day is coming up, and if I remember right, I seem to remember promising you guys a dating sim episode a couple years ago. Huh, I should get on writing that. If all goes according to plan, I'll see you guys next week. Or tomorrow if you watch Film Theory. Woo, hype! 2016!